Mormons are commanded to follow the prophet, but which prophet are they to follow? Next on Polygamy, what love is this? LDS and polygamous children are taught, and I quote, Follow the prophet. There will be times that following the prophet may be unpopular, but following the prophet is always right. End quote. Now, of course, the LDS and each polygamy group have different prophets to follow, but they all teach the same thing. Follow their prophet. One LDS source said that when the prophets and apostles speak, some members see them as faxes from God. Well, if God sent faxes, every one of them would always be in agreement with what's recorded in the Bible. Sadly, they sing a hymn giving glory to a man as they applaud their prophet Joseph Smith, which amounts to humans glorifying humans. But God alone is worthy of the glory and honor that they attribute to their prophet. We have examples of exalting God, not man, in our worship. Yeah, these three scriptures from Psalms 24.10, 57 5 and Isaiah 42 8. Who is he, this King of glory, the Lord Almighty? He is the King of glory. And be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. And I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. He won't give his glory to Sounds another, like so they can glorify Joseph Smith all they want, but God doesn't see it that way. Sadly, Joseph Smith and current living prophets are glorified more than God ever is, but we should not glorify any man to the extent that Mormonism glorifies certain men. What we have just said is summed up in a talk that was given by the late LDS president, Ezra Taft Benson. He said this, As a church, we sing the hymn, We Thank Thee, O God, for a Prophet, hymn number 196. Here then is the grand key, follow the prophet. And here are 14 fundamentals in following the prophet, the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. First, the prophet is the only man who speaks for the Lord in everything. In section 132, verse 7 of the Doctrine and Covenants, the Lord speaks of the prophet, the president, and says, there is never but one on the earth at a time on whom this power and the keys of this priesthood are conferred. It's interesting that he quoted section 132. In in context, that priesthood is polygamy, by the way. But they would never pick up on that, I'm sure. But anyway, according to them, there's only one true prophet at a time on the earth, and to them, that person is the living president and prophetic mouthpiece for God for the Mormon church. But what about the polygamy groups? Does each group have a living prophet uh, who the members are supposed to follow? And since there's only one on the earth at a time, which one (laughs) is the true one? Tough to pick. (laughs) (laughs) Now, many times we have pointed out that they cannot all be right, but they can all be wrong. And that's, yeah, we've that's, a good, conf- that's a good way to say it, isn't it? <laughs> it, it? It's such confusion, especially yeah. from a religion founded by a man, Joseph Smith, who made the following statement. <laughs> Considering that all could not be right and that God could not be the author of so much confusion, <clears throat> I determined to investigate the subject more fully believing that if God had a church, it would not be split up into factions, and that if he taught one society to worship one way and administer in one set of ordinances, he would not teach another principles, would not teach another principles which were diametrically opposed. But that's what Mormonism does within itself. And they're so split into Uh different factions, yes. And this was quoted, by the way, from a book written by Stephen L. Shields entitled Divergent Paths of the Restoration, 4th Edition. At that time, at the time that this one uh, was written, there were over 200 factions split off from the Mormon religion. Wow. And and I just was doing some research recently and, and found that there may be a fifth edition of this book coming forth, which will list over 500 split factions from the Mormon religion. So Joseph Smith was wrong. (laughs) Now, please understand that all of the groups that we talk about on this program revere Joseph Smith as 
as the first prophet of their religion, and they all hold him in great reverence. But they've each gone their own different way, and they each claim that they alone are God's true kingdom, started by Joseph Smith. Now, as he described the 14 fundamentals, Ezra Taft Benson said that the second fundamental in following the prophet, and I quote, is the living prophet is more vital to us than the standard works. Yeah, this is, a talk, this is a talk <laughs> President Benson gave at BYU. President Wilford Woodruff tells of an interesting incident that occurred in the days of the Prophet Joseph Smith. I will refer to a certain meeting I attended in the town of Kirtland. At that time, some remarks were made that have been made here today with regard to the living prophets and with regard to the written word of God. Brother Joseph turned to Brigham, Brother Brigham Young and said, Brother Brigham, I want you to go to the podium and tell us your views with regard to the living oracles and the written word of God. Brother Brigham took the stand and he took the Bible and laid it down. He took the Book of Mormon, laid it down, took the Doctrine and Co Book of the Doctrine and Covenants, laid it down before him. And he said, there is the written word of God to us. When compared with the living oracles, those books are nothing to me. Those books do not convey the word of God direct to us now, as do the words of a prophet or a man bearing the holy priesthood in our day and generation. I would rather have the living oracles than all the writing in the books. When he was through, Brother Joseph said to the congregation, Brother Brigham has told you the word of the Lord, and he has told you the truth. Wow. Wow. That's, that's packed, isn't it? Of yeah, course, it we really don't have is. time to completely unpack it, <laughs> but we're going to do some. Uh, now, their claim, quote, when compared with the living oracles, these books are nothing to, to them, and as far as they're concerned, those books do not convey the word of God direct to us now, as do the words of a prophet or a man bearing the holy priesthood in our day and generation. Their living prophet is more important than the Bible which necessarily includes what Jesus taught. Mm. So they're more important than what Jesus taught. That's what we were taught, that the living prophet was more important than the books. <laughs> Isn't it convenient that it was Benson, while he's president himself, just happened to be the living prophet <laughs> at the time, so it applies absolute authority to his own teachings. Right. But according to Benson's own teachings, everything he said can be invalidated by the next living prophet after he's dead. And some of them have been. They certainly have. Of course, the polygamists never considered him a prophet at all. They have their own only true prophet. But when Benson taught is particularly troubling when we consider the third fundamental point that he made. This is particularly troubling. The living prophet is more important to us than a dead prophet. Beware of those who would set up the dead prophets against the living prophets, for the living prophets always take precedence. And that's packed, too, <laughs> by itself. It really is. So now he's inserted a beware phrase, which is always a very manipulative use by the Mormon yeah. church. That's a trick they use. And then there's the fourth fundamental point, and it is terrifying after setting us up with the first three. And that's this. Yeah, President Marion G. Romney tells him, um, you want me to read that? The prophet? The prophet will never lead the church astray. Yeah, okay. okay. I hope we're in this, on the same we're page We're on the same page here. here. Okay, so that's the fourth fundamental uh, that he of his 14 that he mentioned, the prophet will never lead them astray. And we're going to be talking quite a bit about that, yeah. uh, that particular phrase. And as we discuss that particular pro topic, you'll understand why we call that statement terrifying, quoting again from Benson's BYU talk. Okay, here we go. Yeah. President Marion G. Romney tells of this incident which happened to him. I remember years ago when I was a bishop, I had President Heber J. Grant talk to our ward. After the meeting, I drove him home. Standing by me, he put his arms, o arm over my shoulder and said, My boy, you always keep your eye on the president of the church, and if he ever tells you to do anything, and it is wrong, and you do it, the Lord will bless you for it. Mm -hmm. Then with a twinkle in his eye, he said, But you don't... you." 
you don't need to worry. The Lord will never let his mouthpiece lead the people astray. Now, there's contradiction right there in his own statement. There's sure a contradiction. Is. Because if he told you to do something wrong, that's leading you astray. <laughs> You'll be blessed if you do it, but he's told you to do something wrong. Sure. Yet he'll never lead you astray. <laughs> something is wrong here. And and just recently, we, we talked, that's how we were taught yeah. growing up in the polygamy group. And so the source obviously came from the Mormon church. It didn't come from somewhere else. Now, he said, quote, keep your eyes on the president of the church. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, that's not what God tells us to do. Yeah, from Hebrews chapter 12, two and verses 2 and 3, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and legitimate of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So we're not to fix our eyes on anyone except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus is the only authentic and legitimate living prophet that exists. And because he lives forever, he will always be the only valid living prophet. In polygamy, we were warned against relying upon the arm of flesh, and that's a standard idea in Mormonism. Yeah, I think yeah. you were taught that in sure. the Mormon church. And then they turn around and rely on the living prophet, <laughs> which is relying upon the, the arm, arm of, of flesh. flesh. So keeping our eyes on the prophet, whether polygamy or Mormon, goes against God's command to keep our eyes on Jesus. Now, Benson said, again, I quote, but you don't need to worry The Lord will never let his mouthpiece lead the people astray. Be assured, every Mormon polygamy group also teaches their people that their prophet is God's mouthpiece and will not lead them astray. Polygamists and Mormons are alike in that respect. Before we go on, we want to summarize Benson's first four points on following the prophet, and that's this. Number one. The prophet is the only man who speaks for the Lord in everything. Number two, the living prophet is more vital to us than the standard works. Three, the living prophet is more important to us than a dead prophet. And four, the prophet will never lead the church astray. Okay, so... (laughs) Now, they're really setting themselves up. They? they they have, and there's so much contradiction just yeah. in what we've right. gone through so far. Now, this is a conference report, by the way, and these are things that Benson said as a prophet and president of yeah, the church. He was. So, what he said was supposed to be right from the mouthpiece of God, right? Yeah, exactly. Superseded everything else. Yeah. Right, but then he can be superseded. So, what does God doing? Uh, is he a schizophrenic that he just keeps changing what he wants people to he wants say? To be flexible. Flexible. Okay. Contradictory, nonetheless. nonetheless. Flexible. <laughs> I would like to know if any of our viewers see the danger in any of these statements. All four, of course, are in opposition to biblical truths. But when the polygamous leaders and the LDS church exhorts the people to follow the prophet, we wonder which of their prophets we should follow and which ones we should ignore. According to this, we should ignore Moses. I mean, he's dead. He gave (laughs) us the Ten Commandments. But that doesn't matter. He's dead. Joshua, we should ignore him. Um, He taught us to serve the Lord rather than other gods, and he's dead. Elijah and Elisha, who were both zealous for God's holiness and his glory. According to this, we should also ignore Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Paul the Apostle, Peter, and of course, because Jesus Christ, whose words are recorded in the Bible, because the current prophet is more important than the Bible, Bible, so it follows we need to ignore Jesus as well. And that should make us all shudder. We quote again. The living prophet is more important to us than a dead prophet. Beware of those who would set up the dead prophets against the living prophets, for the living prophets always take precedence. Now that's what we do. So they're telling them to beware of shows like ours. Sure. Because we will quote an, uh, a, a prophet. Who's dead. Uh, who's dead. Uh-huh. And, and what they say today and show the contradictions in their faith. Uh-huh. But already they're, they are um, programmed to ignore and beware of people who will do that. Especially if it contradicts what they think is current teaching. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we can see, we, we can see the brainwashing yeah. that is taking place, the mind control that taking place from their own pulpits. Yeah. And, 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 and I find it's very convenient for them to do this. So when Jesus said, for instance, that there is no marriage in heaven, and the Mormons and the polygamists want there to be marriage in heaven, we should reject what Jesus said and believe what the Mormon prophet says. After all, he's yeah. the current prophet. What Jesus said didn't count. Or when Jesus taught that there are only two places in eternity, early uh, eternity in heaven or eternity in hell, but Mormonism teaches otherwise, we are to believe them rather than Jesus. Mm. A dear friend once said, their blind obedience to their own false doctrine results in the people cooperating in their own destruction. And of course, the philosophy doesn't just include biblical prophets, it includes Joseph Smith, he's been superseded. Sure. Brigham Young, John Taylor, and the others, which gives each current leader per permission to contradict all the previous presidents because Jesus Christ, besides Jesus Christ, because the living prophet is more important and they can do it in the name of progressive revelation. And almost every early Mormon prophet not only contradicted the previous prophets, but some contradicted themselves. And most of them preached in great opposition to <laughs> biblical principles. So who should Mormon people be following? The FLDS prophet who claims to have ultimate priesthood authority, or the all red polygamy group prophet who, who has the true ultimate priesthood authority, <laughs> or the Kingston polygamy group prophet with extreme ultimate priesthood authority, <laughs> or the LDS church prophet with all authority. I mean, they did claim that, didn't they? Yes. That, that he, he is the authority for oh, everything. That's right. Right? Yeah. And there's only one on the earth at a time. Right. So which is it? And if you embrace any part of Mormonism, how do you know if you're following the authentic, only true prophet? This is, these are serious questions. We're not making they fun really of it. No, they're no. serious. The, the, the answer and, and the response by the viewer can determine your eternity. They're, they're that important. Now, many pan, people might answer the question because they, they feel that it's true. I've talked to a lot of people that say that. I just feel it's true. Well, sure, those that are following that prophet, that particular prophet, and what he says, mm -hmm. they, that's their feeling. They pray about it, I imagine. And, and they have that feeling yeah, that it's true. Yeah, they have that feeling that it's true. Yeah. And then polygamists do the same thing. Sure. Exactly the same thing. But feelings are not as important as what God says and not as important as God's truths. And they're certainly not as reliable as God's truths. Now, as we already mentioned, all of Mormonism hold Joseph Smith in high reverence, the same person who admitted that he couldn't tell whether his revelations came from God, from man, or from the devil. And we quote. Yeah, this is from the Comprehensive History of the Church, Volume 1, page 165. Some revelations are from God, or of God, some revelations are of man, and some revelations are of the devil. Now, Joseph Smith said that. He did. So how can you know? Do you really want to follow a person who doesn't know the origin of his own revelations, his own prophecies, especially since, if not all of his <laughs> prophecies failed? Yeah, Most of them, if not all of them, yeah. failed. So when Joseph Smith lied about polygamy, not just once, but many, many, many times, are we supposed to just turn a deaf ear to that? We quote. Yeah, this is... Uh Joseph Smith had at least 13 wives when the following was published. Inasmuch as this Church of Christ has been reproached with the crime of fornication and polygamy, we declare that we believe that one man should have one wife and one woman but one husband, except in the case of death, when either is at liberty to marry again. That was actually the Section 101, wasn't it, of the Doctrine and I think so. I think it was. Yeah, and then so they took it out and replaced it with 132. Right. <clears throat> and whether you're a polygamist or a Mormon, why follow someone who denied his own revelations? <laughs> he claimed an angel with a flaming sword came and told him to live polygamy, and then he turns around and denies his own revelation. Yeah, denies that he practiced it. The present day LDS authority has finally admitted that Joseph Smith had as many as 33 to 40 plural wives, but their admission comes only after decades of denying what they are finally admitting. Joseph Smith also said this. Yeah, in the Discourses of Joseph Smith, page 270. Do the Mormons believe in having more wives than one? No, not at the same time, but they believe that if their companion dies, they have a right to marry again. Now, this is from Joseph Smith's mouth, <laughs> right. but they taught polygamy was required or you would be damned. 
Now, LDS prophets teach you'll be damned if you do live polygamy, but Mormon polygamists teach you'll be damned if you don't. <laughs> so who is leading who astray? Where is the truth in all of this? They teach that God doesn't change, yet they preach a changeable and changing God. Does the so-called restored church need to be re-restored <laughs> to get back to original Mormon doctrine and practice? Joseph Smith clearly led his people astray. What about Brigham Young? Did he lead the people astray? Well, Brigham Young taught dogmatically that God revealed to him that Adam was God. Yeah, this is from the Desert News, June 18, 1873. How much unbelief exists in the minds of the Latter-day Saints in regard to one particular doctrine which is revealed to them and which God revealed to me, namely that Adam is our father and God. Okay, now notice he said God revealed this yeah. to him. He's claiming revelation from God. But now, if you're LDS, it's wrong to believe what Brigham Young taught, even though he taught it as God's truth. But if you're a fundamentalist, it's still true. Mm -hmm. Brigham Young also taught by doctrine, not opinion, that the sinner must be murdered because only his own blood could atone for certain sins. From the Journal of Discourses, number four. This is loving our neighbor as ourselves. If he needs help, help him. If he wants salvation and it is necessary to spill his blood on the earth in order that he may be saved, Spill it. Okay, now. Gee whiz. Mm -hmm. Believing and practicing blood atonement is wrong today, but Brigham Young taught it as God's <laughs> truth. Now, it, it wasn't a theory. It wasn't Brigham Young's personal opinion. He taught it as doctrine, and it was practiced as doctrine. And Brigham Young is not the only prophet who taught it. Yeah, from Joseph Fielding Smith. It says, Joseph Smith taught that there were certain sins so grievous that man may commit that they, will, that they will place the transgressors beyond the power of the atonement of Christ. If these offenses are committed, then the blood of Christ will not cleanse them from their sins, even though they repent. Therefore, their only hope is to have their own blood shed to atone as far as possible in their behalf. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, blood atonement, actually, the idea began with Joseph Smith, and the idea was embraced as late as 1958. Apostle Bruce R. McConkie said this. I wonder if it's still in the Mormon Doctrine book, the more recent one. Mm. As a mode of capital punishment, hanging or execution on a gallows does not comply with the law of blood atonement, for the blood is not shed. So okay. when they say blood is shed, they really literally mean... They literally mean the shedding the blood of the sinner. And hanging execution doesn't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So who's leading who astray? <laughs> I mean, how do you know? Well, let's go to John Taylor. He's next, and he taught about polygamy, and he taught that polygamy was a requirement for the Mormon celestial kingdom, we quote. Yes, sir. President Woodruff, President Young, and President John Taylor taught me and all the rest of the ladies here in Salt Lake that a man in order to be exalted in the celestial kingdom must have more than one wife, that having more than one wife me, it was a means of exaltation. So there you go. It was, it was the means to exaltation. Now, exaltation in Mormon speak is... Living with God, the celestial being, kingdom. In the celestial kingdom is, right. is being God, right? right. Becoming yeah. a God. Right. In this, from, yes, we become gods from the celestial kingdom. Okay, yeah. and we'll talk about that in part two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the polygamy groups, of, of course, they believe this and they live it. That's why they live polygamy, so sure. that they can be exalted in the celestial kingdom. Because that's what the LDS church taught. They, they taught that now, now the LDS church, in its typical chameleon <laughs> fashion, denies that polygamy was ever taught as a requirement for exaltation. So which of the prophets are being truthful? If any of them gave wrong information about how to gain eternal life, he did lead the people astray. He was a false prophet. Yep. God's way to eternal life has never changed, ever. So if polygamy was required then, it hasn't changed. It either does or doesn't. Well, and I'm sure that's what the polygamists hold to, isn't you, it? You it, betcha you it know, is. That, that but it they have a change. changing God and changing doctrine, yeah. you know, and they just think he's a progressive God and keeps up with the times and all that. That is not true. But and in fact, it was John Taylor, the president prophet, who placed under covenant the first fundamental polygamous men to continue with polygamy despite what the government or the LDS church did. Hmm. Was he a valid prophet, worthy of faithful followers or not? Breaking the law. 
He did, too. Yeah. He went. In fact, he went into hiding. Right. And when he was like 84 or something like that, I don't remember his exact age, he married a, a woman that was 56, younger than, 56 years younger than he. Really? And, and while he was in hiding. Hmm. So who's the valid prophet? Who is worthy to be followed? The LDS prophet, now or yesterday or yesteryear? The, the polygamy group prophets, and theirs change, just like the Mormon church is. However, they do stay uh, more closely to the original doc sure. uh, doctrines of early Mormonism than they do. And, 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 um, uh, and John Taylor was uh, uh, died in the wool polygamist. All these men were, for, beginning with Joseph Smith. Why would that change? Why would, and, and if it was wrong now, it's wrong, it was wrong then, so they led the people astray. Yeah. Well, our time is up for this. We've got part two coming because we want to go on beginning with Wilford Woodruff, who would be the next president. And so we ask, and we'll ask the question on him and succeeding presidents, <laughs> did he or did he not, or how did he lead the people astray? So just, be, just before the closing comments, Earl, what, what amount <laughs> of all of this information were you aware of and clung to when you were a Mormon? Well, the fundamentals that President Benson mentions are things that we I had heard, and that's what we believed. You just the prophet, believed it. The prophet spoke, and if the pro current prophet cha made a change, usually it wasn't very dramatic. I mean, it wasn't, although the Brigham Young stuff was always tr troubling, the mm -hmm. blood atonement and Adam God theory. But I don't know whether people just, I mean, I don't know what I thought about that. I, 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 I certainly <laughs> Did, didn't deal even, with were it. Were you even aware of it? I was aware of it, but whether it was a shelf item, I don't really think so. Huh. I didn't, I just excused it, and uh, I didn't know anything about Joseph Smith's polygamy, mm -hmm. but I just accepted uh, what I'd heard about President uh, Were you Reagan aware Biden? of the drastic changes between presidents? Of, of doctrine between presidents. No. But like early Mormonism taught an, an everlasting hell. The Book of Mormon teaches it, but the current day Mormons, they don't, yeah, I never, they don't never teach th that. I only thought about uh, the plan of salvation, the way it is now, the celestial, terrestrial, yeah. telestial. It was never heaven or hell. Huh. Even though that's what the Book of Mormon teaches. That's what the Book of Mormon teaches, yeah. <laughs> never mentions celestial or and, and the early, or very, very early Mormons taught that, too. Heaven and hell. Yeah, they didn't get the three kingdoms until a little bit. They never made that it. connection. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, well stay. it's not anything we talk about, you know. I mean, it's not, unless you, I guess, unless a person really gets into it and starts looking and, and doing that kind of analysis, themselves, it's not taught in Sunday school or mm -hmm. never comes yeah. up in sacrament meeting or oh. general conference. It just isn't talked it's about. Not, it's not a fun topic, so no, they don't want to and, discuss that. And the contradiction, that. we didn't even realize that the Book of Mormon didn't uh. teach any Mormon doctrine, you know. Current well, I didn't doctrine. realize that either until I started <laughs> Doing researching this. for the show, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. It's scary that we're so blind. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It, and, and that's what we want our viewers to know, that you need to check these things out. It's mm -hmm. important. We're not here to make fun of anybody's religion. We're here to because we love the people who, who we came from, and we want you to know the truth. And, and, and like praise God Praise God that he's opened our eyes a little right. bit, at least being able to look at things objectively. And, exactly. Yeah. Stay tuned for part two of, uh, of this. Now, Jesus said that John the Baptist was the end of the prophets, and the end means no more. Jesus said that he himself fulfills the law and the prophets. That means if we have Jesus, we don't need the law or a prophet. No one can build upon what Jesus did and said because everything that he did and said was perfect and complete. So who can add to perfection? Therefore, it's important to follow only Jesus, who was and is the perfect prophet. Those who call themselves authentic Christ followers will renounce everyone but Jesus because he is the only final true and perfect prophet, and he paid the price for our eternal life. Thank you for watching.